There are a lot of reasons people have to not get a Doberman, a lot of them. And I was curious, so I decided to ask all my Doberman Planet viewers out there, and there are a lot of you, what the reasons are that you heard of in your personal life not to get a Doberman, because I want to hear what's out there and give you my honest responses. And I looked over some of your responses out there, guys, and honestly, you really didn't hold back, did you? Yes, I'm always an advocate for the Doberman breed, and yes, I'm still going to be, but I can also be real as well. And as amazing as a Doberman breed is, it's just really not for everyone in every situation. And so, knowing everything I know about this breed, and I study them literally for hours every day, I'm going to give you my true, honest opinions on your reasons not to get this amazing dog. And actually, guys, some of these are pretty ridiculous, so let's just jump straight into it. Okay, and the first one, and this is a common one for a lot of people, they had heard that Dobermans are high on energy and cannot live in an apartment. Yes, they are high on energy, and getting them the exercise they need in a small place like an apartment can be tough, but it's very doable. As long as you work it into your daily routine and you get them out and about and you have the means to do that, you should be fine. These dogs also, they just really love being right on top of their owners. Of course, make sure that they're not on the breed ban list for whatever apartment complex you move into because these dogs are some of the most commonly uh, listed breeds on the ban list for apartments, unfortunately. I did a video all about a Doberman, if you want to see one, living in a small apartment with some owners right there, and they talk about uh, some of the realities of that, so you could take a look at that, but I would not let this hold you back from getting a Doberman. All right, the next person says, a reason I heard from a trainer on YouTube not to get a Doberman was because they're too distracted, which I thought was crazy. I agree, but as a young puppy though, they can get distracted easy. They're a high drive dog with lots of energy, so they get distracted easy when they're young puppies. But as an adult though, they're very highly owner focused dogs. They're a protection breed, so they're always scanning, but they balance that out with always checking in back to their owners. This focus makes them highly trainable. I would not let this hold you back from getting a Doberman. All right, let's see the next reason people have not to get a Doberman. I told my mom about getting a Doberman puppy, and her response was, are you sure you want to get that dog? They're supposed to be vicious. And then she said, but it's up to you, I guess. Well, it's nice it's up to you, but yes, these dogs have a stigma about being vicious. Thanks to television and movies, these dogs, they just have a very unique look to them, and so they're used as a villain dog all the time. Plus, in the 70s in America, there was kind of this bad social trend of Dobermans being like the tough guy dog to own, so a lot of unsavory characters chose this breed at that time, which didn't help their image at all either. But, and really, maybe some of the early Dobermans, the ones in the late 1800s, early 1900s, you could argue those might have been more aggressive than today's Dobermans, but today's Dobermans, they're bred to be family dogs. They're great with children, generally, um, and great with people, as long as you socialize them very well in that critical socialization window, which is between four weeks of age and 16 weeks of age. Socialize them well in there, and you should be just fine. I would not at all let their image hold you back from owning this amazingly gentle dog breed. All right, let's go on to the next reason why people have not to get a Doberman. My parents know that a Doberman is my dream dog, and they kept reminding me about how high energy they are and that almost no insurance companies will cover them because of their aggressive reputation. Yes, we've talked a lot about their high energy, but as far as their insurance companies, they are the most banned breed in America. USA Today did a study on the homeowner's insurance policies, and the Doberman was the number one most banned dog breed. It's really sad. It was followed by the Pitbull and the Rottweiler. Those were the next spots of the most banned dog breeds. Really, this just limits the policies that you can get. You might have to look a little harder for a homeowner's policy that will accept it, but I want to let this be a reason not to get a Doberman at all. All right, the next reason we have is they are big, and when they get rowdy or excited, they run through anything in their way. When they're young, yes, I will agree to that. When they're older, however, no, this is not the case. Definitely by the time they're about two years of age, I'd say this is generally pretty well handled and mellowed out. But even at one year of age, they can be about 75 pounds. And at two years of age, they can be up to 100 pounds. So there is a time frame in there where you gotta be careful about them running into you. But as long as you train them with good habits, using the power of habit with this breed, which is something that's strong with this breed. In fact, I'll have a video all about that popping up in the corner of your screen. I would say this is not a reason to not get a Doberman. All right, the next one is, I've never heard of a reason not to, but after having several, DCM, which leads to high health costs and short lifespan would be the only reason I tell people not 
to get a Doberman. If it wasn't for DCM, they truly are the best breed of dog. DCM, dilated cardiomyopathy, is a huge problem. This is a heart condition that disproportionately affects Dobermans. In fact, one study showed that 58.2% of all Dobermans will be affected by this at some point in their lifetime. Now, there's not really testing that we can do for this on a genetic level before they start showing symptoms, but we can test for some risk factors, which can help a lot as well. And if you catch this early enough, their lifespan can be well managed with medication for up to an additional two years, but sometimes, yes, they can die within the first six months. In fact, a lot of them, I think, die in the first six months after diagnosis. Every purebred breed has its thing. It's one health issue, it's concern. This is ours, unfortunately. And if you're looking at a purebred in general, I would say this is something that you have to deal with with any breed. It might just be a different health concern. I wouldn't let this hold me back from having an amazingly wonderful dog like a Doberman. All right, the next reason we have is, I can think of a couple reasons why somebody wouldn't want to own a Doberman. One reason is that they really are a Velcro dog and they really stick to you like glue in a way that it can become pretty annoying. Well, yes, they stick to you like glue. Dobermans love being by their owner's sides and if that annoys you, I mean, you're not gonna be able to go to the bathroom alone again, but you know what, equally, you'll never be alone at 2 a.m. when you're just up stirring, you've had a really bad day. You'll always have your Doberman up and with you. And if that bothers you, then okay, maybe you shouldn't get a Doberman. But I will say a lot of us actually really enjoy that about this breed. All right, the next reason we have not to get a Doberman, their brains will grow bigger than their skull, making them turn on you and try to kill you. You know, it's funny, that's a long stigma. And I actually did a video about that a while back called uh, Why Do Dobermans Turn On Their Owners? And I actually kind of regret titling that because it led to a bit of confusion about what that video was about. But if you wanna see that video, it should be popping up in the corner of your screen. You can take a look at it, and hopefully now you won't be confused as to what it's about. But in that video, um, I do talk about some of the reasons this myth may have started about Dobermans, and one of the reasons is something called canine compulsive disorder, or CCD, which affects up to 28% of Dobermans. And, but usually this has to do with more your Doberman doing some real repetitive behaviors over and over, kind of compulsively. But it does have to do with some abnormalities in the brain, so this could be part of the reason. The other potential reason is hypothyroid Thyroidism, which can lead to aggression in dogs. Dobermans are prone to hypothyroidism a bit, uh, and but this doesn't have anything to do with their brain growing too big for their skulls. But in reality, this is just false. If this were true, then the Doberman would definitely account for more than 1.4% of all dog bite, bite fatalities in the United States, far behind other breeds that are generally considered very gentle, such as a Husky and the Labrador Retriever. So no, I would certainly not let this prevent me from getting a Doberman. All right, the next reason we have not to get a Doberman, I want to get one, but my dad says it might bite a little kid and I will get into trouble. Biting little kids. Dobermans are not big biters. They're incredibly gentle family dogs, especially if you socialize them very early. You'd just be amazed at how gentle these dogs are. Find somebody with a Doberman as their family dog and meet that dog, and I think you and your dad are gonna be pretty impressed. The next reason not to get a Doberman, they're too smart and they will try to train the owner too much. Now this is a solid reason not to get a Doberman. They are incredibly intelligent dogs, very dominant dogs, and yes, with dominance and intelligence mixed together, they can sometimes try to train you. If you don't have a solid training plan that you figured out ahead, ahead of time and you've stuck to very religiously all on the process of raising this dog. In fact, according to researcher Stanley Korn, when he did a research for this book right here, The Intelligence of Dogs, he cited that the Doberman is the fifth smartest dog breed in the world and one of the most very elite dogs in terms of trainability. Now this intelligence can be used for good or for bad. Yes, if you're a big pushover and not a strong, calm, consistent leader, they can take advantage of that, but it can also be an amazing asset because you can train these dogs in new commands in as little as five repetitions. Not every dog breed can do this. It's a great thing about this breed. The next reason people have said that they don't want to get a Doberman, they're increasingly short lifespan due to genetic associated DCM. Now this is true, they do tend to have a problem with DCM like I mentioned earlier, and the lifespan, I did a study at Doberman Planet where we processed tons of information from social posts of people reporting their Dobermans dying, and we found, from our research anyway, that the average age of death was around nine years of age. That does seem very short, but honestly, there are things you can do to mitigate this, such as feeding your dog a quality diet, plenty of exercise, but also, really importantly, testing your dog 
or testing the puppies of a dog you're considering, for example, going to the breeder, seeing if you can test them genetically, get a dog with a low COI number, coefficient of inbreeding. That's something that a good genetic test will test for, and that has a direct link to longevity. It'll also hopefully test for things such as DCM1 and DCM2 markers, which will help clue you in as to what their potential risk level is for developing DCM. All right, the next reason we have not to get a Doberman, my mom once said they are too big and strong for a smaller sized person to handle. Very true, but you really shouldn't be relying on overpowering your Doberman in order to train them. You don't need to be able to bench press your dog in order to own your dog. But in all fairness, I think I know what you're referring to. If your doorman takes off while you're out for a walk, for example, unexpectedly at a squirrel or something else, it could be a little scary. And you know, I don't usually talk about prong collars or electronic e-collars, for example, on this channel, but I do think, because I think they can be over relied upon and also abused and not used correctly. But if it's for a safety reason for everyone involved, including the dog, Sometimes tools like this aren't a horrible thing. So there are things that you can do in certain circumstances to mitigate that issue. All right, the next reason we have from a viewer is they are the best doggies on the planet, loyal, intelligent, courageous, great with children, train them, which is easy because of their intelligence, treat them with respect, and they will love you to death. Never ever had a problem. So beautiful they are. Well, Peter, this isn't really a reason not to get a Doberman, but I actually agree wholeheartedly. And just kind of wanted to include your comment in this video anyway. Share this video. Share this video out there to help break some of the stigmas. This is a great one to share because it talks about many of the reasons people don't want to get a Doberman and really gives some insight into that. So let's continue working to break the stigmas around this breed and make sure everyone knows what a real great family dog this is. Thanks so much for watching us here at Doberman Planet. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon down below so that you can slowly just get better and better and more knowledgeable with this amazing breed of dog. Thanks so much for watching guys. Take care and I'll see you on the next one.